Hello, welcome. My name is Nicole Lux Ritchie and I help professionals with their digital offices. And so I primarily work with Office 365 and G Suite uh, with work around email, files, calendars, and contacts. And I welcome to you, yeah, welcome you to this presentation of Detangle Your Digital Office, where we're going to get your digital digital office set up to support you and talk about some really practical ways of doing that. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So imagine, I want you to think for a moment, imagine that, um, that you're getting ready to start your day and everything went well for you. Let's say that you got up on time, your uh, your kids got off to school on time, or you uh, were able to get your exercise in, do some meditation, however you start your day in a way that's really productive. And let's also say that this particular day, um, you're going to dedicate toward your genius work, toward the thing that you love doing in your business. That being said, it's possible that you may need to do a few things that are not your favorite things to do, but you have to do them in your business and they do have to be done by you. So let's say that you open up your computer and the first thing that you need to deal with is your email. So we're going to, to pretend that we've opened up our email and however your actual inbox looks, um, of course, varies wildly between people, but we're gonna say that this is a standard uh, email inbox. And somewhere in here are four things that depending on how supportive your, e your digital office is, will determine whether or not these four things can get done in 20 minutes or in you know three and a half hours. So we're going to be talking about how to get your digital office set up in such a way that you can can uh, get these things done in 20 minutes. First, I want to make sure that you have your handout. Um, I can send that over to you in the chat box or you'll see it in um, whatever notes you may be uh, viewing this recording on. And this handout is, is not uh, required. It just sometimes helps with the learning and, and helps you jot down some of your thoughts. Near the end of the presentation, I will have time for questions. They're not going to be part of this recording. So if you're watching this live, you will um, be able to ask questions and not worry about it being broadcast out to the world. Um, I generally don't allow questions during the presentation because I tend to go down rabbit holes and um, that would not be good. So your digital office is your email, your files, your calendars, and contacts. And this should be a synergistic system that works together to help you get your stuff done. So it's not just, though, the specific tools, the specific email, files, calendars, and contacts. This also represents your communication. Are you communicating with who you need to communicate, when you need to communicate with them? Your information, how well is your information organized and can you retrieve it when you need to and do you know where to put it when you receive it? Your productivity, are you doing the things kind of in the right order at the right time and or are they all jumbled and making you crazy? And then lastly, and certainly not least, in fact most important is your relationships. All all of the things that you do can point toward improving your relationships and building, building trust and, and gaining clients and, and all the things that we want in business. Now over time, and this, this little bit, uh, some fill in the blanks for in your handout. Over time, as I've watched businesses and worked with my clients and, and looked at my own business, uh, this is probably not going to actually be a secret to anybody, but I've realized that the secret to managing your digital office and really, for the most part, many of the things in our life, the secret is balancing your improvements with your maintenance. 
So if any of you can ever think of a time when you've made a huge, huge improvement in your life, whether or not you got the garage all cleaned out or you lost the right amount of weight or you cleaned out your inbox, maybe you set up a whole new file system and it was amazing and then it all fell apart. If that has ever happened, it is possible that there wasn't a maintenance system put in place to go along with that improvement to keep it up. And so if we're continually balancing the improvements with the maintenance, the improvements with the maintenance, we'll be able to have a more functional and sustainable system. And that's what I'm going to talk with you uh, today in these four areas of email files, calendars, and contacts. Word of warning, there may be some images in here that are super, super scary. Um, don't worry, um, we can get through it. They're not going to be too traumatic, but if you need a, you know, if you need to put it in the comments that you need some support in this, let me know. Uh, but we're going to go on to the first scary slide. Uh, well, we're going to find more scary slides. First, we're going to look at this inbox, and it is slightly scary. There's a little bit of chaos going on here, but right now we don't have time to actually clean it immediately, but we do need to find those four emails that, um, that we have to actually deal with. So looking through this list, we'll do a quick scan, and we're going to grab this one here. Could I get a list of references, please? So this speaks to, obviously, contacts. This is an email that, that many professionals have received. And you may, off the top of your head, think, oh, yeah, totally. I'm definitely going to let them know about Amy. They're going to talk to her, and it will be great. Let me grab her information and send that right off. But what if your contact situation looks like this? This is our super scary slide. Which Amy is it? Um, are these all the same Amy? Are these different Amy's? How is this arrangement and, and which Amy are we going to deal with? So we've got a contact list. If it is scattered and we got lots of duplicates and we've got lots of inconsistent data, this is something that, that ideally would be dealt with. The other super scary thing about contacts is what if you lose your phone? Do you have your system set up in such a way that if your phone were to fall into the seat, would you be able to pop on over to your local phone store, get a new phone, sync everything up, and off we go again? The goal is that you would be able to. All right, we're going to go back to the email. We say we got, got that, um, that one taken care of. And our next email here is a, I need to reschedule. So sorry, but that time slot didn't work. We need to have a new one. So this can either be a super great problem to have, or it can be very traumatic. You may, depending on your calendar situation, know immediately that you're like, oh yeah, no problem, we'll do that Tuesday at 10. But what if you have a paper calendar and you left it in Australia? This could present a problem. Do you know exactly, uh, know exactly where your time is spread, where you have gaps, where you can, can reschedule that appointment, and how quickly is it going to be for you to determine? Do you need to go to three or four calendars? Do you need to flip through 15 pages? And do you know and can you trust that it's up to date? These are the things to consider when looking at your calendar. So our next email, is attached is the report you need for your proposal. So let's say this is an email, um, email that you receive. Let's say you've been waiting for it. You need this information for a client. You've got to get this, this situation dealt with. Um, or maybe it's something that you're going to need in a week or two. The trick here is to know where should you save this information so that you will still have access to it when you need it. So it does not get lost because it's super important. So here's a very scary slide when I do this um, for live groups in a, in a room, everybody gasps, horrified. But what if your desktop looks like this? So here we've got a desktop covered with different icons. 
if you're saving that file to the desktop, where is it going to go? Is it going to land over over here above Alex's head, or is it going to go over here by by Cole's ear? Is it going to hang out by Evan's arm? We don't know. So there's nothing wrong with saving things to your desktop, but having it arranged in such a way so that it doesn't get in your way is, is what we're going for. All right, now, that slide was pretty scary. This next slide is the scariest slide of all, and this, is, this next slide is actually why I do what I do, because I never, ever, ever want my people to go through this particular scenario, although I have seen it more times than I, um, than I would like. And I'm going to go ahead and click and let you just take a look at this list and see if you can find it. There's a couple of, of somewhat disastrous things about this particular slide. Um, this is a Gmail account, which means that Gmail has pages. So it's like you, the first 50 emails are on one page, the next 50 emails are on another. So this particular email, we're on, we're on page 51 through 100. So we're on the second page. If you're using an Outlook account, this means you've got to scroll way down that list. These emails on this slide are buried in the email list, and that's super sad there. But the more sad thing is this right here. Here we've got an email that says, I would like to get started right away. This is our, our you know, potentially $100,000 a year contract. This, this could be your, you know, that, that one client that you've been, been working with for years and years, um, and they're going to go take it to the next level. We don't know what this is, but it's like a super exciting email. But the sad part is, is it's on page two. And what's worse is it's on red. We don't want this to ever, ever, ever happen to you. And so this is why we're going to get digital office improved. So this is the I would like to get started right away email. And we want to be able to answer that one right away. So what can you do? I've showed you a whole bunch of super, super scary things. I'm not going to leave you hanging because there are plenty of things to do so that none of those very disastrous situations will happen to you. And we're going to start by contacts. So with contacts, the best thing that you can do is choose your primary contact list. And this is just a, it's a matter of making a decision and making sure that your phone and your computer are both hooked up to that decision. In many cases, most cases, this is going to be your primary email account because every email account has a contact list associated with it. And that contact list can hold names, phone numbers, addresses, notes, and you can tag them. You can set up that whole contact list to be that one go-to for your business. Setting it up in your phone, the best thing that you can do is when you're looking at your phone and you're entering a new contact, and this is more for the Android users, you can notice where is that contact being saved. If you're looking on that new contact list, it'll identify which email account that contact is being saved to. That is have it saved to the email account that you also check on your computer synchronizes. So when you add someone to your phone, it goes to your computer. When it adds to your computer, it goes to your phone. And that way you can relatively easily maintain them. So in that maintenance phase, contacts are a bugger. You probably already know this. They duplicate themselves. They, um, they, you'll save a, a phone number in one contact entry. You'll save an address in another contact entry. So they are something that you need to regularly uh, update. And for that, at the bottom of your handout, I have a little chart. This little chart is super fun. One of the things that I do as I'm, I've got you know 15 minutes or so every couple days, I go through my contact list to update them. And so today is the 22nd of October. 22nd is starting with the letter V. Let's start with the contacts that start with the letter V. And just see how many you get through. Because 
organizing your contacts really should never be an hour, two hour, three hour long project because that would be a nightmare. But if you go through this process, you know, every so often, every couple, every couple days or so, maybe even every couple weeks, you will keep it under control. And as you're working with contacts and you see that you've got a duplicate or you see that you've got um, some information that maybe need to be updated, take care of that. And as long as you're doing it in your primary contact list, you'll be able to trust more that your contacts are accurate and up to date. Next, we're going to deal with the calendar. Calendar again, we're going to talk about your primary calendar. And I like to tell people to use your body's calendar. Where does your body need to be? Do you need to be in front of your computer doing your work? Or do you need to be over at a networking event? Do you need to be at a client's office? Where does your body need to go? Having one calendar that tells your body where it needs to go will allow you to really determine where your time needs to be spent. You can most certainly have a variety of calendars, a calendar for your kids' sports teams, a calendar for your sports teams, a calendar for, uh, for your networking events, and, and a calendar for food. You can have a variety of calendars, but your body should have one primary go-to calendar. And for maintaining that, and even back, back to the, let me go back to this, the improvement real quick. This is another instance where your phone calendar and your computer calendar can be synchronized. So making sure that you can enter an event in your phone and it will show up on your computer and enter it in your computer and it will show up on your phone. Because when you're out and about, you need to know where you, you're going to go. And then when you have planning time, you need to be able to see that full calendar. And that's where the maintenance comes in, is to consistently enter your appointments and evaluate your schedule weekly. So here I've got a little image of the body's calendar. And you can use fun colors in your calendar and, and determine what they are. I generally will have people set up um, you know, your client meetings with one color. It looks like I've got my client meetings on this test calendar in, in blue. I've got my personal time here in green. I've got some content creation or, or you know, focused work in this light blue color. And as I look at this calendar, I can see what my time looks like. So when you're looking on your, your weekly, look for where do you need to drive? So do you need to drive to yoga? Give yourself some time and you can create an event over the top of those two. Uh, if you've got lunch, you got to go drive to lunch. Uh, this call, you don't have to drive anywhere, so you wouldn't need to, to identify that drive time. But those transition times tend to be the biggest things that, that muck up people's calendars. And so making sure that you are entering those in. The other thing that you can do is as you notice where your, your client information is, your, your client calls or your appointments, do you need to set aside some time for, for prepping for those appointments? And do you need to really block that out on your calendar? Do you need to make sure that that's blocked out for, for that after your client, for doing the work? I find I'm most excited about doing my client's work right after I've talked to them. I really want to just get started. And so blocking out that time is essential, especially if you use a calendar system for, for scheduling like Calendly or Acuity or uh, Time Trade, where people can schedule uh, appointments on your calendar. You want to make sure you've blocked out and protected the time that you need. This also, this planning time is also a great time to go in and look on, on the various events that you want to attend and make sure that you can get them into your calendar and know where to go and when to be there and, and what to bring. So we've dealt with calendars, now let's deal with some files. For our improvement on files is really to become familiar with how Finder and Windows, Windows Explorer work. So you noticed when, when I had the scary image of the desktop, that's just on your desktop. That screen has only a certain amount of space that it can hold and be organized. But the underside of your computer is arranged very much like a room and filing cabinets. 
and the, the little happy blue finder guy for your Mac users and the file explorer for your Windows users. They, they behave very similar to, to filing cabinets. You open the thing up, you can see a list of your folders, you can see a list of your files, they can be organized alphabetically, they can be organized by um, how often you use them, a variety of ways. But getting really familiar with how that's arranged on your computer will allow you to know where to save things, where to find them once you've saved them. And then a fun little trick is to sync those, those cloud drives with your devices so that you can have access to the information on your computer and keep it in the, in the cloud. So the maintenance on, maintenance on files is, is pretty straightforward. Save things where they go and regularly clear your download folder. So whenever you're, you're downloading things to your computer, they will go to a folder labeled downloads, which is super great. However, other things also go into that folder. Uh, if you've installed a program, there will be a, a little installer program that once you've got the program installed, you don't need it anymore and you can get rid of it. Your download folder can take up a ton of space on your computer. And once you've downloaded it, once you've saved the important things to a location where they go, other than the download folder, you can delete everything that's in there and it will save you space. And here's uh, just a very quick visual on how that, um, those computers are, are organized. Here are your file explorer. You've got the files on the left-hand side. And this here, this highlighted documents is showing what's in that particular folder, and that's here. Same is true for Finder. You've got your documents on the left side, and then what's in the documents on the right. And you can drag and drop and move them around and make them as organized as you want. For naming your files, that's also going to be a point that will allow you to find things better. Your, your computer wants to, when things are organized according to name, your computer wants to name them based on first special characters. And you want to be careful with this. For naming files, you want to keep those special characters to the underscore, the dash, and possibly the exclamation point. Um, you want to avoid spaces in the beginning and end of your file name, and you also want to avoid things like the at sign or the, the period, um, some of the other special characters. But usually you're pretty safe with underscores and dashes. Next, it's going to organize things numerically. So first by special character, then by number, and then alphabetical. So this means that if you've got a very important document that you want to keep top of mind, just put an underscore in front of the file name and it'll pop itself to the top. This is also very useful for organizing things like pictures or things that need to be organized chronologically. Notice here on the right, we've got pictures to where if I were to just create these folders as, as the, the year goes, January, February, March, April would be the very first file. Well, April is not the first month. So just simply adding a simple 01 to January, 02 to February, 03 to March, that will put all those folders in their chronological order. The other thing to be aware of is notice that we have um, October, November, and December. So if we were to just go one January, two February, three March, our arrangement would be January, um, October, November, December, February, because that's how the computer wants to arrange it. So those zeros can be very helpful as well. For files that you share, it is a very good idea to put your company name first, dash, whoop, and then their company name. That way, when they see this file in their file inbox, they know it's from you. I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten a folder shared with me named Nicole. Okay, I have three folders named Nicole. Which one is the one from you? This is something to be aware of when you're sharing things, and this, this works in a variety of situations. 
So now we're going to finally get down to email. This is what you've all been waiting for, I'm sure. And we're going to talk about the improvement for your email. For email, the biggest thing with email is that we want to be able, like those four emails that were in that mess of stuff, we want to be able to see immediately what we've got. And we want to be able to keep the things safe that we need to keep so that we, we know what we're dealing with. So what I recommend for, for my people to do is to set up an exclamation in process folder. We put up that exclamation point for the same reason uh, that, that I described in the naming convention. It puts it as high, as close to the inbox as possible. This in process folder is super useful for all the things that are triggering a task. So in the case of our example at the beginning of this presentation, it would be those four emails. They would be safely in the in process folder. And so you can go through, go through that in process folder, you put all your tasks in, or you go through your inbox, you put all your tasks in your in process folder, you gather and you save all the other things that you need to save. And whether that's in just a folder labeled save or a folder itemized by different categories is completely up to you. But get them out of your inbox. And that way you can clear your inbox of all the nonsense. You can delete things, you can unsubscribe from things, you can get rid of things. And that's where your maintenance is coming in. Well, your maintenance is to regularly clear out your emails from your inbox. The goal the goal is to get to zero. That's not feasible for everybody. It's not feasible all the time, but you can get very close and you want to do it regularly so that you know that you didn't miss that I want to get started email. So I recommend my people very similar to what we did with contacts and, and looking for that, that day of the, um, the day that corresponds with the letter. For email, every time you go into your inbox, just unsubscribe from five things. 90% of the things that we subscribe to, we don't need. You all know how to go look up stuff on Amazon. You all know how to go in and research something on that, that very important topic. Very few newsletters that people subscribe to, there's very few that we actually read. We, we've, we're busy, we don't have time. So if you haven't read a newsletter in the last, let's say three or four weeks, unsubscribe from it. You can always resubscribe. So here's our secret for checking email. And that secret is that checking email is two activities. The first activity is triaging it and then processing it. Figure out what you need to do and then do it. And so you'll go through your inbox with a very binary brain of, I need to do this, I need to save this, I need to delete this, I need to do this, I need to save this, I need to delete this. Do that for, say, you know, 15, 20 minutes, depending on how, how busy your inbox is, and then stop, go to your in process folder, and do your work, because that's where your important brain stuff needs to be. So now, as you do that, as you've consistently done the maintenance and improvements on your system, you may open your inbox and it might look more like this. And in this case, these emails are very easy to spot, very easy to deal with, and you can go on about your day doing the actual things that you want to do. Thank you so much for joining me as I have offered this presentation. I'll be getting to questions uh, for those of you who are attending this live in just a moment. But before I do that, uh, I want to make sure that you're aware that I, I do offer a complimentary discovery session where you and I can talk about your particular digital office situation. Uh, this would be great for, for if you have any um, specific questions about how you can make your office run more smoothly or more efficiently. And so you can find uh, um, a scheduling calendar at luxcentric.com slash discovery. Also, every other week, about every other week, I offer what I call a digital detangle. 
and that is 30 minutes. It's a Zoom call, so we're all face-to-face -face, uh, chatting about digital office situation stuff. And you can find more, find out more about that little program um, at rescuemydigitaloffice.com. And thanks again for joining me on this presentation. If, this, if you are viewing this on YouTube, you please subscribe to um, my channel, wherever that red subscribe button is. And I look forward to seeing you around the internet. Thank you.